of psychology and pop culture had a baby, they'd call it shrink tank. A new paper reveals more intelligent people are quicker to learn and unlearn. 90% chance that there's some like weird animal out there. Yeah. Stern's been doing this forever and far more extreme. From Nashville and Charlotte, this is the Shrink Tank Podcast. Welcome, everybody. If you're joining us for the first time, a very special welcome to you. And if you're coming back for more, thanks so much for joining us. I'm Dave Verhagen here in Nashville. We have a great show for you. Our trending topic today is Michael B. Jordan. We're going to talk about that great actor in our second segment. But first, let's meet our Charlotte panel. Dr. Emma Kate Wright is here. Hello, Emma Kate. Howdy, Dave. Since we're going to talk about Michael B. Jordan in the next segment, I wanted to ask you if there's a current young actor or actress you think is absolutely awesome that you see big things for. You see either big stardom or Oscars or anything like that in his or her future. Um, yes. So I have just recently, and I know she's been around for a while, um, but Zendaya, she was originally a Disney star. Um, and the first thing I remember seeing her in was the recent Spider-Man where she played Mary Jane. And I thought she did a great job. And then she was incredible in The Greatest Showman. And, um... I remember there was some controversy um, a while ago with E! News where they have that fashion police show and somebody made a really um, kind of bigoted comment about her dreadlocks maybe smelling like weed or patchouli. And she was young and she handled that so gracefully. And I just think she seems so immensely talented that she's going to show up in more things and she's probably going to be a massive star. All right. Yeah, I could see big stardom for her. She she definitely is very talented. She's got a good stage presence or screen presence. So uh, I'm I'm with you on that one. Well, Dr. Frank Gaskell's with us. And Frank, how are you? First of all, I'm doing good. You hanging in there? I'm doing I'm doing well. You're doing shall well. I say. All right. Very good. Now, Frank, I know one of the things that is uh, true of you is that you never remember anyone's name. You don't know anyone. Right. And this right, I know the character, but not the actor. Right. So, and I'm I'm saying like even in your real life, you like you don't know any human's name. You, yes, everybody's hey buddy, hey dude. Right. So right. I, I'm going to ask you this question, knowing that the chance of you knowing someone's actual name is low. But okay, is there a young actor or actress that you think is absolutely awesome? Yes, Millie Bobby Brown. Ah, that's. I a good think, one. I think, I think we one. are going to see her. Uh, for the rest of her life in film, okay. the, her her acting uh, in Godzilla, Stranger Things, amazing. But you mean the other the thing, Godzilla trailer. Yeah, the other thing, <laughs> right? The it's not out thing, yet, Frank. <laughs> yes, in the Godzilla trailer, when she when she pulls that door shut, she looks amazing. She looks like fierce. Uh, okay. The but the um uh. the thing that's interesting about her and what I'd want to know is how her manager is steering her career away from those other kids on Stranger Things. Like she's really divided herself from that franchise and isn't typecast in the same way. So I, I, I think she's going to go a long way. All right. I, that's actually, Frank, I'm very proud of you. That's, that's actually a, Thank you, David. A, a, a good pick right there. Well, Thank you very I, much. I really, yeah, I really loved the Godzilla the trailer. Godzilla, the way, Godzilla the trailer was some when kind she of. Closed I mean, that door, it got me man. so excited. I've seen that Godzilla so trailer probably twenty times. What? <laughs> I love Godzilla. Oh my god! I've shown it to all his clients during session. Oh right. my gosh! It'll be like, well, that's all the time we have for today. See you tomorrow. Um, all right. <laughs> Jonathan Hederley is here. He's our certified Asian. He rounds out our panel. And Jonathan, um, I'd be very curious to hear your pick for young actor or actress that you think is going to kill it in years to come? Well, it's interesting because uh, when I was looking up young actors and actresses, there's so many that are like under the age of 25 or even under the age of 30. And so, I mean, you could mention Lucas Hedges coming up in Boy Erased, Timothy Chalamet and Beautiful Boy, Call Me By Your Name, uh, Tom Holland, who uh, played Spider-Man, Peter Parker. But there's two, there's an actor and an actress that, I think because of their versatility, like they can do comedy, they can do drama, suspense. I think they have a, a just a, a limitless future. One would be Ezra Miller. Ah, oh, he was, was my in guy. The Perks of being the Wallflower. That was my pick. And he, 
and uh, he, you know, played Flash in, in the Justice League. And then Margot Robbie, I think, as an actress. Oh, yeah. She just, she's so versatile, the Wolf of Wall Street. She did I, Tonya. She's, I mean, she's got it all. Talent, comedy chops, beauty, like, the, the future is limitless for her. I agree. I mean, she, she is like an old school movie star. You know, yeah, she's, she's got, got that, that presence, that right, gravity that presence, and that that kind of classic beauty. Um, but also, like, she's super funny, and she, I mean, like, I Tanya, she nailed that. She absolutely nailed that that role. It was so good. Okay, well, you stole mine, um, Ezra Miller, and of course, I think it goes without saying now that that uh, Timothy Chalamet and Lucas Hedges are kind of the the kids to beat in terms of the who you would put money on to get an Oscar within the next decade or so. Um, But I'll give you two names of actors that have something in common, but they're very different actors. They both played the same person in two different, um, two different films or two different event. uh, uh, One was in film, one was a television series. And that is they both played John Paul Getty, the third. So there's a guy named, um, uh, Charlie Plummer, who played mm-hmm. John Paul Getty the Third in All the Money in the World, and then there's a guy named Harris Dixon that played him in um, a television series based on the Getty family called Trust. They they have very different vibes about them. They have very different strengths as actors, but those are both guys that you will see a lot of in the years to come. They're both will have, they have legs on their career. They're both going to do really well. I'd say if I had to pick, I think Harris is going to be the guy that will be in award contention for years to come. So we'll keep our eye on that. Well, each week, Jonathan trolls around the internet and he finds a story for us of psychology in the news. It's our first segment that we call Being Human. So this Being Human is really for Dave and Frank here. It's common knowledge that there are many benefits to being fit, but one large new study found that skipping out on the gym is particularly bad for your health. Frank, in fact, the study claims not exercising may be more harmful to your health than smoking. And although it is widely understood that an active lifestyle can lead to a healthy life, the study concludes that a sedentary lifestyle is the equivalent to having a major disease. So Franklin, how you doing? I exercise four days a week, buddy. Do you? I do. Tell us what do you do? I use a Peloton and I use weights. Good for you. I have been since July. I can tell. Why don't we ask Dave how often (laughs) he exercises? Divert attention from me and back to Dave. Well, I I go to the gym every morning and evening. Um is this is called it? a deli? <laughs> no, it's it's. Uh, I have to kind of go underneath it to get to my car. Oh, there it is. Yeah. I see. Where, yeah. where I see. in in where I live in Nashville, there's kind of a, a sky bridge thing that's a workout facility, and I have to go underneath that in order to get to my car to go to work. So that's that's awesome. Yeah. So in well, in the two years that I have have lived here. How many times do you think I've been to that gym? Which, by the way, is kind of just down the, I mean, it's like, you know, a few hundred yards from me. What's your Zero. guess? Zero. I'm going to guess once to see it. Okay. No, I'm talking about not just to see it. I'm saying to actually oh, oh, um, work out in it. I'm going to say maybe twice, All but right. even that feels high. I'm going to guess zero. It would be one <laughs> only if Ellen dragged you yep. and made yeah. you yep. or something. I don't know. Ellen dragged me one time, so I had ah, there it is. <laughs> That's awesome, hilarious. But I will, well, Dave. Let me t- go ahead. Let me tell you. Let me tell you something about this study, and and you just try to think on this. They are saying that if you are unfit on a treadmill, it's worse than being hypertensive, diabetic. Or being a current smoker. Wait a minute. If you're unf- and this is if you're unfit, if on you a are treadmill? unfit on a treadmill related to death, you have a worse prognosis if you're unfit than being minute. hypertensive, diabetic, or a current smoker. So if you're if you're unfit and you get on a treadmill, it's worse than all those things. No, just <laughs> if you're unfit. Oh, 
Uh, they they well, have on. a what measure do... on a treadmill as to oh, whether you're what you're fit saying. or okay. unfit. I thought you meant like I was yeah. like, well, how does anybody get on a treadmill then? If they're <laughs> right, that bad. <laughs> okay, that here's bad. all we need to know. There for the longest time here at the Charlotte office, we had a group of clinicians that would walk up ten flights of stairs to the top of our building, and then they would they had a chart that they would put stickers every time they did so, and after much prodding and maybe some some raising, you know, uh, we got Dave to agree to do five stories. Like he was going to meet us halfway. He was going to elevator himself up to the fifth floor and then do the final five flights. So we did the first five flights and met a fully refreshed Dave who after one and a half flights (laughs) was not, not not doing well. (laughs) This is not a true story. (laughs) This is totally true. I totally story. believe it. it is not he was I think, sweating by the tenth. I think floor. Dave's a little too old to discern fact from opinion. Yeah. Uh, well, I will tell you this: I did do the walk to the top of the building one time and walk down, and I thought I would die. And <laughs> I, yeah. I will tell you this also: Do you remember when? It was something like one of these ortho, like ortho Carolina or something. Oh, yeah. had all these like trainer guys that came and made us do like workouts and obstacles in the parking lot. Do you remember this, Frank? I do. Did you sign a consent? Well, I, I honestly thought there was like a point in there where I thought there's a 55% chance that I will die right now. That's I mean, what that's I was worried how, about. Yeah. I mean, it was like. It was pretty bad. And if you ask Trey Ishi, one of the psychologists that works here, he said, the look on your face was terrifying. <laughs> so, <laughs> but I'm going to also, listen, this article, the study that this is based on, has totally gotten me, uh, I, I am absolutely going to start working out. I'm telling you for for real. I'm, I'm not kidding you. Because this article okay. came out, and at the same time, my dad had a stroke. His whole left side's paralyzed. He's in the rehab thing. I'm like, uh, I, I got to start doing something. The way my brother's yep. been coping yeah. with his stroke, my dad's stroke has been going to the gym like every single day. He can, at 50 years old, my brother can bench press 215 pounds. That's awesome. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. No, that's awesome. E- even if it's just walking, Dave, like walking can be really helpful. <laughs> I know. Right. Yeah, walk- oh, you're so I'm worried about you. She's, she's got her, her therapist voice on right now. Well, you, know, you can walk. Even if it's just walking. <laughs> you can walk to the restaurant. You, you walk, walk home, home from the restaurant. Yeah. I mean, Ellen got a great workout dragging you to the gym just to, <laughs> just to be there. <laughs> oh, it's, it's bad. I, I, you can hold me to it. I tell you what. Let's say by December, a December podcast, you ask me if I've worked out. I mean, not just worked out once, but like if I am working out, if I'm doing something uh, active. How about oh. next week? Uh, okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay, there it is. So by the next election, you can ask me. You can ask me I, one time. I worked out one time. Oh, all right. Well, if you have questions or comments, but please, no, no, um, no words of of, um, of criticism for Dave with his not working out. But if you have questions or comments, you can write us at feedback at shrinktank.com. We'd love to hear from you. Let's move on got, got, to our trending got, topic. Got, We're going to talk about Michael B. Jordan, one of the greatest young actors, one of the best actors of his generation. This is a guy that um, showed up in The Wire, which is a television show that some critics consider the best show ever on television. Uh, he was on Parenthood. He was on Friday Night Lights. And then his film career, he was in Chronicle, which was a very underrated film. Fruitvale Station, a fantastic performance there. Creed. And then, of course, Black Panther, where he played Eric Killmonger. And uh, I would consider, along with other people, some other people, Eric Killmonger to be the best villain in the Marvel canon. So uh, a guy who has a a early career that's loaded already. He already has 45 film credits or film and television credits. Um, So I want to ask you guys just kind of going around any role or performance of his that really stands out for you. Emma Kate, do you have one that you particularly favor or like? Yes, because it's the only one I've seen. 
And that was Black Panther. But genuinely, I mean, and I mean this honestly, he was awesome as Killmonger because there was a little part of me in that movie where I empathized with him, even though he was the villain. I was like, this is kind of not his fault, but it is. And I mean, he did a great job. How about you, Frank? Any any of those roles? Uh, <clears throat> yeah, I thought he was great in that uh, Black Panther movie. Pretty awesome. Yeah. Oh boy. Thought he- <laughs> There kind of go. nailed it as Black, <laughs> as Black Panther. I, I, I want to ask you an honest question before we go on with the rest of this podcast. When I said Michael B. Jordan at the top of the podcast, did you know who that was? I did because I prepared. But before <laughs> I prepared, I thought, is that Michael Jordan's son? Does he like I haven't heard of him? So, yeah, I don't know actors. You know that. But let me ask you this. I know who Killmonger is. Did you see Black Panther? I did. Okay. Okay. And did you I like it. it? Did you like it? I, I I went into it not wanting to like it because I'm tired of superheroes, and I came out thinking, okay, that was a pretty good movie. I gave it like a B plus. Frank's, Frank's opinion is now, I mean, worth nothing after the last week where he saw the play Hamilton and didn't like it. Like there's no person. I thought, it, I thought he no, was in Hamilton. There's no human in <laughs> oh the world God. that doesn't like Hamilton. So uh, I didn't say I didn't like it. I thought it was fine. You said you it's a it. musical. It's fine. Well, like, why mean, do people cry in the, sh- in the movie? Well, I don't, I don't get that. All right. We'll talk. That's another one that we'll talk about that later. Jonathan, any um, role that you particularly like of, of Michael B. Jordan's? Well, I mean, Really, all the performances that he's known for, I think he is able to add layers and, and sort of conflict when the, with the character. Like, I don't think without him being in Fruitville Station and, and his collaboration with the director, Ryan Coogler, he would have been able to pull off such a sympathetic and complex character like Eric Killmonger, which really, like you said, it's the best villain it makes you care about things and it feels like there's actual stakes versus most of the marvel films now it's like how cool are they going to have these action sequences Mm -hmm. and the new trinkets but it feels very shallow in terms of like what's really at stake because it's always the whole universe and somehow they avert the crisis whereas this one was i think a little bit smaller in scale yeah, I think we're agreeing that this is a particularly strong actor. And for those of you who, oh, I guess I'm not counting Frank because I don't think you know much of his work, but what what is it about him do you think that makes him especially good? Like what? why is this a guy that you would know? Kind of at the top of the, of the hour we were saying these are actors or actresses that we know have legs as a career. There's something about them. What is it about this guy? Okay, here's what I got. He's a renaissance man. He's a triple threat. He wrote a Hamilton-esque uh, play. He it looks younger than he really is, so he's got a lot of experience. He's kind of like, uh, who's the guy that did uh, This Is America? What's that guy's name? Childish Gambino. Yeah, he's kind of like Childish Gambino to me. That he's He's got so much maneuvering room in terms of his art form that whatever he touches is going to be amazing. Mm-hmm. Is it just because, you know, he's been objectified and shirtless a lot in Creed? No. Okay. I, I, I read I read up on this guy. Oh. Okay. How, how, many, how many grandchildren and great-grandchildren does his grandmother have? I don't know. I don't know. 115. No. Yes. Fact, not opinion. Not opinion. <laughs> my, it's my opinion they have 115 grandchildren. It's my opinion uh, of that. It's my opinion. And he's also he's also not a he's not looking for the spotlight. It, the only reason we know who his girlfriend is is because the girlfriend's grandmother blabbed about it. Yeah, hmm. that is true. I mean, there, so, facts. So, there is something about that though that that he's a guy that's more committed to the craft of acting than his personal brand or platform. I, I agree with that. Mm-hmm. 
Yeah, I was going to comment on how he does seem very dedicated, um, like especially for Creed. I mean, he had to work out relentlessly to get prepared to actually fight professional boxers. And there were scenes where he was really getting hit. And when you were seeing him spit blood, that was actually him spitting blood. And so this level of commitment um, is really critical. And it's been uh, there's been so much perseverance because he's been doing this for 15, 20 years trying to have this start. Um, and, and honestly, like he deserves to be on top at this point. He deserves to be getting the good roles, and he's worthy of it because he is a solid actor. Um, so, if anything, I think because of his dedication and then his, un, you know, he really does have the talent as well. It, it's going to be a really good career for him. Jonathan, I mean, what's you your think about your sense? Yeah, you think about people that are just phenomenal at their craft, whether it be acting, music, or sports. And more often than not, they just have natural God-given talent. I think Michael B. Jordan just has natural God-given talent, but he has not taken it for granted. Like very early on, he's cultivating his craft. It seems so natural and organic. Like you watch a lot of young performers or even you watch films directed by young filmmakers. You sometimes see the threads. You, you sort of see the stitching. It feels a little bit mechanical and put together where there's just this natural flow. But I also think he has natural charm and likability as well. So he's not he's not demanding the spotlight, but the spotlight finds him because he's just got that that charisma. Um I mean Killmonger Killmonger in a lot of ways is a very likable villain. There's a lot of charm you know in parts of his his character and I think that just is what Michael B Jordan has in spades. I agree with you 100% and I'm glad you said that because there there is something about people that have a natural talent in something and an incredible work ethic. So as example, you look at LeBron James, Kobe Bryant. These are people that are naturally good athletes. They're just, um, they're naturally good at it, but yet their work, work ethic is beyond other people's. And so you, the com combination of those two things, a, a predisposition to be good at something, whether it's athletics, it's acting, uh, science, whatever the thing might be, and an incredible work ethic. That's those are the people that go to a different level. They've got another gear that they can go into that other people don't have. There, there are a lot of young actors that are good actors, and and there are a lot that that have a good work ethic. There's not a lot that are natural. Like you think about like a Leonardo DiCaprio, naturally gifted actor and a hard worker. Um, at least historically has been in his, his films. Those are the, those are rare. Um, those kinds of guys. And he's one of those guys. He's going to be a guy that's going to, I mean, he'll, he'll be, um, multiple Oscar nominations in the course of his career. Um, multiple, um, you know, awards, great roles, that kind of thing. He's got a great platform. So, um, let me ask you one more thing about him before we, we move on. Uh, do you feel like for him, he seems like he's avoided, like Frank says, the the seeking out kind of selfishly the spotlight. Is there anything for him that you would be concerned about or anything for him that you would say he needs to do or not do in order to have the legs on the career that he deserves to have? Emma Kate. So. I've talked about this before, I think, when we spoke about Justin Timberlake, but and it is so critical in Hollywood and Tinseltown is that he has this really close relationship with his family. Um, and it sounds like, you know, he was living in, I think he was living in Newark, New Jersey, and, you know, some of his friends were getting into some rough stuff, but he had this strong family support. And even now, um, apparently he still lives with his parents, or, or I should say his parents live with him because he bought a home and move them in with him. Um, but the fact that he has those people that have known him forever that he can go to probably and say, hey, what are your thoughts on this and get an honest opinion versus a, a yes man sort of thing, whatever you want. Um, I think that's going to be something that he's got to continue to do and probably will do. Well, and I think the other part that protects him is he, he's got to be a super resilient kid. So he grew up in Anderson, South Carolina, and I know Anderson, South Carolina, and as a young black child, you do not want to live there. And uh, he was there in 2015 and was headed to 
either his parents' house or an event or something, and they said, yeah, you need to go this way because there was a Klan rally being held as he was coming into town. Wow. Yeah. Jonathan. Yeah, he does seem to have really strong family roots. His his parents are still married. He has other siblings that are pretty successful in their own right. So the kind of the environment that not only that he was raised in, but that he currently operates in seems very healthy and grounded. He grew up, his family kind of described themselves as religious. He identifies himself as being spiritual. So I think there's a lot of values and character that is kind of driving his his life direction. And I think the other thing, when I think of Michael B. Jordan right now, I don't think of, I don't associate him with other young actors that have created like this squad of like up and coming actors that are living the Hollywood lifestyle. I think of him with the directors that he has collaborated Ryan. with. And I think that's a real, yeah, Ryan Coogler and even Sylvester Stallone. I think those are smart moves for young actors to anchor themselves with mentors, people that yeah. have gone through that phase that's, of Hollywood and stardom. That's what uh, Leonardo DiCaprio did. He anchored himself to Martin Scorsese, for example, and Steven Spielberg. Yeah, Emma Kate. Yeah, and I do think that he developed a good, strong relationship with Sylvester Stallone through Creed because um, there was. I was listening to an interview with him from a while ago where, in prep, uh, I guess there's like the major fight scene. You know, his body was just physically going through so much in preparation for this that he ended up. They they filmed the final scene um, and they still had some work to do, but his body just kind of shut down on him. Um, and he got like 103 fever. He was on bed rest for a while. And um, apparently the same thing happened to Sylvester Stallone. And he called him. And, and you could just kind of tell the way he was talking about him that he really is this mentor person for him. Yeah. We hope he stays grounded. He's got all the ingredients to be a all-time great one. And he's also doing, sounds like, the right stuff of staying grounded with his family, grounded spiritually, making good career choices, having mentors in his life. So... We are looking forward to the years to come with him. If you've got questions or comments about Michael B. Jordan, we hope you'll write us at feedback at shrinktank.com. We'd love to hear from you. Our final segment, something that we call our doctor's orders. These are things that we're personally enjoying in popular culture that we want to recommend to you. Emma Kate. Um, So I have two recommendations, actually. So one is a little outdated in terms of it being closer to the Halloween time, but I finally finished The Haunting of Hill House on Netflix, and I really like that. So if you want something spooky and are into that, definitely check that out. But I also just stumbled upon a new artist called Kina Granis, um, and her album In the Waiting, I think she's been around a while, but um, I really enjoyed her music, and I think you guys should check it out. Kina Granis. Jonathan. So I am a big music nerd, and Bob Dylan has for decades been dropping uh, official bootleg versions of live concerts or outtakes, and he just recently dropped uh, an album called More Blood, More Tracks, and it's really outtakes and alternative versions of his uh, just landmark album Blood on the Tracks from the 1970s that really chronicles the of his failed marriage. So I highly recommend that. It's called More Blood, More Tracks, Bob Dylan. My recommendation is something I've already recommended, but I recommended it in advance of the book coming out. We did a show where we talked about The Coddling of the American Mind. There's a book by Jonathan Haidt and another contributor. And uh, I recommended it in advance, just knowing this guy's work. I've had the chance to listen to it on audiobook, and I recommend it even more. It's even better than I thought. Again, it's another essential book. Everybody should be reading this book, The Coddling of the American Mind by Jonathan Haidt. All right, that's going to do it for this edition of the Shrink Tank Podcast. We hope you'll check out shrinktank.com for great articles and videos. And also, you'll find links to our Doctor's Orders products. You can follow us on Twitter at shrink underscore tank and like us on Facebook. For questions or comments, please drop us a note. Our email is feedback at shrinktank.com. And if you like the show, please give us a review on iTunes. It helps us build our audience, and we'd greatly appreciate it. Our producer and theme music composer is Sean Beck. Our associate producer and social media guru is Mariel Butler. For Emma Kate Wright, Jonathan Hederly, and Frank Gaskell in Charlotte, I'm Dave Verhagen here in Nashville. Tell all your friends about us and make it a great week.